Hi, this is Jackie Penner with Jacqueline Penner Art. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a succulent. This is what I'm going to be painting. I've painted this on a white poster board that is the same as bristle board that you can get at any stationery store. And um, I've drawn it with my sketch, oops, onto this, onto the back side of the poster board because I prefer to not paint on the glossy side myself, but that's uh, up to you if you like, which side you like. But you can paint this on anything, you know, on a canvas, on a, um, a piece of wood or any surface that you have or laying around. So, even in a sketchbook, let me clean up my little paint mess here. All right, and I'm just going to show you how I mix my paint. So all you need today is the surface you're going to paint on, plus some acrylic paint and a paintbrush. My paintbrush I'm using today is just a small to medium size rounded brush that comes to a point. This one's from CraftSmart number eight size. And I have here um, some green paint. This is Grass Green by Folk Art. And then I've added some ultramarine blue to it. This is Americana. And then I'm also adding here some burnt umber, which is a dark brown, which is what I have on my palette here, palette knife. And then I have some white paint in these areas here. So what I'm doing is making a dark green. And you can use any green paint that you have or make a green from yellow and blue. And uh, so what I'm going to do is mix this together and get a nice dark green. And then I'm going to make different shades just like this. So we're going to have um, the darkest up to the lightest, and we want four different shades. So what I'm mixing here is going to be my darkest green. And it can be any kind of green you want. It could even be blue or purple. You can make your succulent any color and use this same process. So just start out with your darkest color. Okay. Let's see if I've got something similar there. Yeah, that's pretty close. Acrylic paint always dries a little bit darker than it looks when it's wet, so this will look even darker when it's dry. So I think that's probably good. And what I'm going to do now is, is just continue to mix three colors of this same green that are lighter. So they're all going to relate to each other because they're all made from this same green color. So I'm going to mix some into my little bit of white here. I had maybe half a teaspoon of white paint in there. And this one's still going to be quite a bit on the dark side. So I, I want to still keep that pretty dark. Yeah, even darker yet. close could be just a smidge darker okay and now I'm going to make an, another that's a shade lighter I 
add some of this to this one. good and then this next color is just going to be quite light but just green enough that it's green and not white so that's how you can get yourself four different shades or these are actually different values of the same color so I have four different ones here you know this one could be even a little bit darker I probably had more white paint in there than I really needed but that's the idea Okay, just rinse off my palette knife. I like to keep a section of paper towel next to me here. This is what it looks like, nice and messy, but I, you know, it's two or three paper towels folded together and I, I work on it. And as I'm painting, I wet my paintbrush in my water and then I dab it off like this so that I don't ever have drips of water especially when I'm painting on paper because I don't want there to be lots of water anywhere I just want a damp paintbrush so that's what I'm using off to the side here along with my jug of water I'll just move my paint out of the way okay so here are my colors. And I'm going to start by painting the darkest center area of my succulent first. And that's with my darkest green. And this is a sketch that I drew myself, which is fun to do if you can just find a picture of a succulent and and uh, sketch it out a little bit just the rough shapes um, you know you have sort of a circular shape and then some small round shapes in the center and then and then these curving c shapes that go out from the center and some of them have a little point here so very simple to draw And I, I have a sketch, but I don't always, you know, make myself stick to the exact um, drawing of what I'm doing, you know. Uh, sometimes I, I just change it up a little bit and I paint over, paint over it sometimes or just make it different. Yeah, I think I should have left that little section lighter, so I'll leave that open and paint white over a lighter color over that when I get there next. And I'm just going to go around this area here. There, and that gives you the dark center of the succulent. And you have some little shapes in the middle there that are going to be a little bit lighter. And then we get to these C shapes here and now I'm going to move on to painting our petals so I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit because I don't want to have too much paint adding up on there otherwise that just makes it harder to paint okay so for each petal where am I gonna start here I'll start in in this section here so this is the intersection of the petal and then I'm gonna leave these C shapes 
white for now because we're going to paint those with our lightest green later. So I'm going to get just a bit of the darkest green and closest to the center of the succulent. I'm going to paint that here. And I want a bit of paint sitting there so that it, it still feels like there's a wet paint there for a moment because acrylic paint dries really fast. And I want to blend my greens. And if you don't have wet paint, it's not going to blend. So I've got the next lightest green here. And I'm putting that in and it's blending a little. And then I'm getting the third lightest one. And that's what I'm going to use right up to the edge of this white C shape. And then I will blend that in together a little bit. So closest to the center, I want to have my darkest green showing. Then closest to the outer part of the petal, I want this, this green showing, the one that's not quite the lightest one. As we're painting the petals, we're going to use these three greens. And I'm just going to keep turning my flower around, my succulent, and move on to the next petal. So I'm putting the darkest green in there. I had a little leftover other green on my brush, so I'll wipe that off. Put in the darkest green. And the next one in the middle of the petal. And then the lighter one at the edge. So I'm painting it at the edge first and then blending it down into the middle a little. And you know, if you don't do it that fast and your paint starts to dry, it's not going to blend as much, but that's okay. Just give yourself the dark, the medium, and the lighter green, and it will still look as though it's blended when you're not right up close to your painting. So don't sweat it if it doesn't quite blend for you at first. Blending takes a bit of practice, so. But moving fast helps because your paint will stay wet. Okay, I'm just going to keep moving around these layers of petals. And as I get to the petals that are on the outer part of the succulent, I'm not going to use as much of my darkest green because they will be lighter as you go out towards the edge in general. Oops, I need the next one. So if you happen to be seeing this today, which is Saturday, June 8th, there's still time to sign up to do my five-day painting challenge called Bees, Birds, and Wildflowers that is going to be starting tomorrow. But even if you're busy this week, um, you don't have to paint tomorrow because it's going to be an online video class held in my private Facebook group called Mini Painting Tutorials for Beginners that will be um, five videos in total in my private Facebook group that will be delivered in there this week and then they, you will be able to view them anytime that you want to paint at your convenience at home um, anytime from now until July 30th. So 
Um, the cost to register is $10 and you can email me or Facebook message me. My email is Jacqueline Penner at yahoo.ca or just message me on my Facebook page, Jacqueline Penner Art. And I'd be glad to add you. Um, otherwise, just keep following my page on Facebook. I'll have tutorials every now and then. And if there's something in particular you'd like to see a tutorial on, feel free to let me know. Okay, so that's how we continue to paint these petals around our middle of our succulent. And I'm just going to take a moment to show you what we are going to be doing in my five-day challenge. So first we're going to be painting this dahlia. And I like cutting them out of this paper. It's so fun. So that's the colors for the dahlia. We're going to be doing a chickadee with those colors. And you can, of course, use any colors and any acrylic paint that you want. These are just the ones I'm using. A bumblebee. A starling. This is quite dark on the video, but it's actually dark blue and, and purple with the oranges there. It's really a pretty bird. And the last one will be this peony. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to our succulent here. I really enjoy painting these. I've painted a few now and uh, they're so relaxing because you don't have to think too much. You just keep going around from the center to the outside and um, really fun to paint. And once you have this painted and you, if you want to use it, um, you could even frame it or cut it out like I've cut these out. This one I added some sparkle uh, glitter paint to it. Um, so you could do anything you could think of with these, like add it to some cardstock and make a greeting card out of it, make uh, a party decoration, a banner, or whatever you want. I would love it if you send me a picture of what you painted. If you get a chance to paint one of these. 
And the fun thing about painting it on paper is, you know, if you really mess it up, just toss it out and start a new one. Um, if you get interrupted while you're painting, I like to keep my paint in these sometimes because it helps keep the paint separated. And also, you can pop these into some sort of little airtight food container and it'll stay wet for quite a while if you want to come back to your painting, if you need a break or something and you already mixed up your paint then just pop it into some sort of Tupperware container with a lid, if it's maybe an old one that you don't mind getting paint on, and then you can just keep it in there until you want to paint next time. Give it a little spritz of spray of water or a couple drops of water on top of the paint, and that'll even make it stay longer. Okay, almost there. So on these outer petals, I'm not really using uh, my darkest green here anymore. Just the medium two greens. As soon as I get this done, we're going to move on to using our lightest green. Oops, that one was the dark green. Okay, and also with my medium greens, a little bit of each probably, I'm going to paint in these central areas here because these won't be as light. So I'm just going to paint them in the medium green. And this one here, I want to add in a C shape right there. Okay, now I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm going to put on my lightest green here. You can try this, whoops, you can try this same size of paintbrush that you're using, or you might find it better to move to a small one depending on your brush, but And 
already the paint that I've put on in the center has dried, so I can easily overlap it now if I want to make a smoother shape than what I had left from where around I painted here. So see here, there's a little funny little shape there. So I'm going to just paint over it and make a nice C shape here with my lightest green. And I'm just going to fill these in. Kind of like coloring. And some of them have a little point out to the edge here. Remember to move your painting around as you go so that your hand can be the most comfortable as you're painting. Otherwise, it might feel awkward. And if you happen to be using a white paint that is a little bit transparent, mine is just a smidge transparent, you might need to go over these twice depending on how you think it looks. But if it's too transparent, just go over it a second layer. And make sure you keep picking up enough paint on your brush because once the paint isn't coming off the brush as nice, it probably means you might not have enough paint on there. So I can be found on Instagram, Etsy, under Jacqueline Penner Art, as well as Facebook and Pinterest. And I have a website, JacquelinePenner.com. I offer different types of workshops. I sell my work and... Uh, I love to help others find their creative voice and learn how to paint if they do.
I really hope you try painting one of these. Please let me know if you do. And once you paint one, you might paint 10. It's a fun thing to do with some, with some kids or your friends. Summer holidays are coming up and kids need something to do, so bring them over here and get them to do a painting tutorial. Oops, I smeared that already. Okay, and always remember to step back from your work. It's going to look really good from a few feet away. Right now, your nose is probably right up close to it. And you tend to think of all the little mistakes. I've got a couple little bloops of paint here, but it really doesn't matter. Once you back away from it, um, I am going to cut this out as well with some scissors and I just leave a little you know one eighth inch of white around the edge and uh, looks great so I hope you give it a try and uh, come back and watch another tutorial sometime thanks a lot for watching I'll see you in another video bye bye